Welcome to this week's program of Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. And today our guests are Natalie Dunnage, Recruiting Manager, and Nona Milislavsky of Facebook. And to begin, I always have to ask, Will, what's with your shirt this week? Funny funny you should ask that, because my my newest shirt is is from the recent Power Morphicon. It, it, it was the sixth Morph Power Morphicon, th this time held in Anaheim. It was celebrating Power, the Power Rangers' 25th anniversary. Were there a lot of people there? Thousands. Good grief. Th th from, from, from around the states. Excellent. What did you like best about it, besides possibly the shirt? Co the cosplayers, the fan fiction. Well, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed that, and you got a very cool shirt. So well, now we'll get into uh, a program. Uh, will, will you take it with our first guest, Natalie Dunnage? Gladly. What do you do as a What do you do as a, an, a What do you do as an employment recruiter? Yeah. So what I do is I help different startups around the Bay Area uh, find the types of employees that they're looking for, and I help them set up interview uh, processes and make sure that we're bringing in people with the right skill set for the job. How did you come to work as an employment recruiter? What is your background? So I came from a background in uh, sales and fundraising and then I met the company I'm with now called Bink um, through a job fair that I went to. How did you become involved with the autism community? So I have a teenager who's on the autism spectrum um, so I'm pretty familiar with autism and I wanted to be able to use my skill set as a recruiting manager um, to help teach interview skills to adults with autism. Let's start with general strategies of employment. What do you, what do you recommend? I would recommend um, just looking at a lot of job descriptions and narrowing down um, the job that you're most interested in and looking at the skills and matching your skill set to the skill set on the job description. Um, speaking with friends, uh, looking at internships, um, speaking with mentors if you have one or finding a mentor uh, who can help you figure out what strengths you have um, and where you can best apply those strengths to, uh, to a job that uh, you're going to enjoy. Regarding the adults on the autism spectrum, what do you do? You have any? Do you have specific specific advice? Yeah, I would say uh, find uh, people in your life you can practice uh, interview skills with. Um, people who can give you feedback. Um, practice uh, interviewing by discussing your your experience with a beginning, middle, and end is really important. Um, always looking into the job before you interview, um, finding out what's interesting about that company, um, and making sure to make it a point to bring that up in your interview. Um, those are all important things to do when, when you're looking for a job. So Nat, a lot of people have sort of general ideas of what uh, recruiters do, and, and you, you mentioned what you typically do overall, but can you sort of give us an idea of what uh, your day-to-day -day work is like? What does it actually involve? Yeah, so I usually meet uh, with clients who tend to be different companies around the Bay mm -hmm. Area and so uh, we'll go in and we'll figure out what their need is and usually that's figuring out uh, through an intake process um, how many hires they need to make, uh, what types of hires those are. They could be software engineers, they could be sales roles mm -hmm. or administrative. Um, and then I work with the recruiters to understand where to look uh, for the right people for those roles. And then we make sure that there isn't, uh, or that there aren't any hiccups in the interview process. Um, so to make sure that the interview process is fair and inclusive and, um, and that every step of the way, um, you know, all the interviewers are on the same page about the type of candidate that they want. Excellent. 
So if I understand you properly, what you do is you initially meet with the companies mm -hmm. and you do the intake interview. And then after you gather that information, you talk to the individual recruiters uh, who go into the various steps. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the interview process and you make sure that it's, uh, it's functional inclusive. Can you tell us a little bit about what typical interview processes are like? Yeah, so usually there's there's a few steps, at least in, in my experience. So my experience is definitely limited to working with startups mm -hmm. and um, primarily engineering roles. I would say a little more than 50% of the roles I've filled have been on the engineering side. And the steps are usually um, a recruiter will review your LinkedIn um, or your resume online. They'll reach out to you. You'll do about a 30-minute screen with them over the phone. Um, if that goes well, they move you over to a technical screen or what's called a team screen. Um, and that's about another like 45 minutes mm -hmm. uh, with somebody from the company. Oh, if I may mm -hmm. stop you. Yeah, can sure. You, can you tell us a little bit about what uh, each of those steps would, would cover? It's like, what would the uh, initial 30 minute uh, interview with the recruiter deal with typically from me? Yeah, so the recruiter is going to ask you what your interests are, uh, what you don't want to be doing in your next role, um, uh, what your specialties are. So if you're a programmer, there may be certain languages you're stronger in than others. There may be certain frameworks you hate to work with. Mm -hmm. um, so that's important to know to make sure that you're a good match for what that job is. Um, and then from there, they'll find out you know if you have any other on-sites or offers. Um, when you're looking to leave your current role and start a new role, um, yeah, and just like a little bit about your work history okay. also. So sort of a general overview of what the person is doing mm -hmm. and what they have done and what they want to do. Okay, yeah. good. And then what typically happens at the uh, either the technical interview or the, the team interview, and, and is that done on site or how, how is that handled? Yes, yeah, so the um, technical or team interview, uh, most often it's done over a video call. Mm -hmm. And it's about 45 minutes long. And if it's a uh, technical interview, it's like a 45 minute, what's called pair programming. And so an engineer, oh, you want to know what pair yeah, programming yes, is? Please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, so um, that's when they usually do like a, a shared screen over the video mm -hmm. call. Um, and so you'll code live while the interview is the other interviewer on the other side of the screen is watching you code, and then you talk through your code together. Um, and then usually the last 15 minutes of the call is just open for you to ask any questions mm -hmm. about the company. Oh, good. And then is there typically an on-site interview, or what happens next? Yeah, so if you do well in the pair programming, um, then you get moved usually to an on-site interview. And the on-site interview is definitely the more arduous of the, the interviews. It can be about anywhere from three to five hours long, depending on um, the difficulty of the role um, and uh, you know the quality of the candidate that they're looking for. And so after about five hours, <laughs> hopefully you've passed it. And, uh, and then you usually find out in a week or two. Thank you. So now you, you told us a lot about what the various steps of the interview process are. Uh, can you give us any advice or details about how the members of the community might be able to best deal with these various stages of the interview process. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I think asking for a clear outline of what to expect before each interview is is absolutely a fair thing mm -hmm. to do. Um, and so, and letting them know what your needs are. You don't have to uh, disclose that you have a disability if you're uncomfortable, but it's okay to let people know how you'll uh, best interview. Um, at the end of the day, the recruiter wants you to be successful because they want to make the hire. So the more honest you are about what you need during the interview process, the better the outcome will be. Excellent. So, so pretty much your advice about promotion is uh, to be honest as as you are of what you're really interested in and um, and hoping that there's a guarantee that um, it, it will get through the way they want it to. Yeah, yeah I think um, for, for looking at growth opportunities or promotion, mm -hmm. um, a really great thing to do is uh, to find your manager, supervisor, or a mentor or buddy that you've been partnered up with at work 
and ask them, what are the steps that I can take to move to the next level? Um, have them outline those steps with you and then follow up, um, you know, make an appointment regularly to follow up and ask them, how am I doing? Did I complete this goal? Am I ready to move on to the next step? Mm -hmm. um, and just having like a, a clear way to track your progress is really important. Mm -hmm. And if so, if someone else isn't tracking your progress, you can definitely do that for yourself and then advocate for yourself mm -hmm. um, come time and you can, um, you know, look back and say, these are all the things I accomplished and these were all the steps I needed to take mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that I'm competent in my next role. Will, do you have a particular question for Nat? Do you work with students? Do, do you work with students who have disabilities besides autism? Yeah, I work with uh, any student who responds and is ready to interview. And so sometimes those students have a variety of disabilities. Uh, some of our recruiters have uh, worked with um, people who are deaf or hard of hearing and uh, needed uh, special equipment during their interview. Um, we've had uh, people with physical disabilities. Um, I think um, I've also helped set up an interview process for somebody who had Tourette's. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, if the person has the right skills for the job and we're working with a company, we try to do everything we can to make sure they have the right accommodations in place to be successful during the interview. Excellent. And along those lines, um, based on your experience, uh, both as a recruiter and as a mother of someone who is on the spectrum, do you have any general advice about when or if a person should disclose that they're on the spectrum? Yeah, I think each person is, uh, it really depends on how confident they feel about bringing it up. And mm -hmm. so you should really only do what's in your comfort level. Um, I think build a, a relationship with the recruiter. I, I know uh, from my personal experience with autism, it's easier to build a relationship one-on-one -on -one with somebody mm -hmm. versus trying to build a relationship with an entire interview group. And that recruiter should act as your advocate during the interview process. Um, and so they're kind of like your representative uh, for the company. And so it's good to just build a one-on-one -on -one relationship with them. Um, to make sure that you you have what you need and the support that you need throughout the process. Really good. Now, Jennifer, you mentioned you had a couple of questions for Nat. Well, yes, first of all, it seems like employers who have a choice between a candidate with superior technical skills who gives a weak performance at the job interview and a candidate with weaker technical skills who gives a superior performance on the job interview, they're always going to choose the second person. And that puts a lot of us at a disadvantage because a lot of us have excellent technical skills. I myself have a master's degree in statistics, but we're just not that good at giving job interviews. So the first question is, how do you get around that problem? And my second question related to, pro to promotion is that sometimes promotion is not the best thing because in a lot of places the only type of role they get promoted to is a supervisory role. I've never witnessed this personally but I've heard story after story about an engineer with superior technical skills being promoted to a supervisory role and they crash and burn because they can't handle it. How do you work with that problem? Yeah so for your first question about um giving the hire to somebody who doesn't have as strong technical skills but might have stronger like interpersonal skills right that was your question yes um yeah i i completely <laughs> i'm right on your side with that it's not fair at all um one of the things that i'd recommend and again this goes to self-disclosure and in your love how um, what your level is of being uh, comfortable with disclosing um make sure to let the interviewers know ahead of time, let the recruiter know like what your needs are. That's so important because the more honest you are, the more they can take those into consideration and actually focus on your skill set during the interview. So again, you don't have to say, I have autism, um, I need X, Y, Z during the interview process, but you can say, 
hey, so I have some, you know, social anxiety or I do better in a quiet room with, you know, an interviewer one-on-one -on -one versus me and a team of interviewers. I was wondering what sort of accommodations you could offer so that they understand going in um, that the, the goal is to focus on your skill set and it's a good reminder for them that uh, everybody's different and sometimes people who do really strong um, don't do well in, in group settings. And so, you know, you don't have to have uh, really strong interpersonal skills to be the person to get picked, but I think if you're, you're honest with the team and the recruiter and you're letting them know what your needs are, they're more inclined to like focus on the actual skills during the interview. Thank you. I'd also like to, to add in, since uh, I've worked for a number of years as a recruiter, and what I typically tell both candidates and hiring managers uh, and the people who interview them are that you need to establish two things about a given person. One, is that person capable of doing the job that they need to do, aka are they competent? As you've mentioned, Jennifer, establishing like the, the technical skills. The other thing is, would you feel comfortable working around this person for an extended period of time, um, aka are they likable or tolerable or bearable? And the candidate needs to establish and the interviewers need to find out if they can say yes to both things. If a company says yes this person is competent and yes this person is likable, by whatever standards likable tolerable or bearable means, then they should hire them. If they can answer yes to both, then they shouldn't hire them. And if they don't know, they should ask some more questions. So as a candidate, it's your job to show that you can do the job and that they want to be around you. And if you can't do that, you won't get the job most of the time. Thank you. So. That was a much better answer. <laughs> it's a much longer answer. Thank you, Natalie. I can't say any better. So you had a, a second question you wanted to answer for that. Oh, I'm sorry. I already forgot your second question. Okay. Well, it's related to promotion. Oh, that's right. Yeah. In a lot of places, the only type of role you can get promoted to is a supervisory role. And that is often not the best, often the worst type of role for someone on the autism spectrum. Yeah, um, I, I think you, it's important to set clear goals with your manager and your supervisor. And if you're uncomfortable being in a supervisor role, um, you should definitely let them know that. Um, if you think that you can handle it, you should tell them, hey, I have some concerns um, and maybe we could do like a trial period and test this out. Um, but you shouldn't get thrown into anything that you're uncomfortable with. It's, it's good to push your boundaries and take on new challenges, but if it's something you're confident that you won't be successful in and it's not where your interests are, um, then you should just let the, the supervisor and the manager know, hey, I'd rather focus my skill set on this other area uh, versus leading people, and it's okay to, to do that. Thank you. Finally, do you have any advice for members of our community about how someone who is applying for a job with a company can be actually get noticed in the process? Yeah, absolutely. So to get noticed uh, in the interview process or for a recruiter to actually find you, what I would recommend is going on LinkedIn, um, looking at uh, the people who work at that company. You can see, uh, usually LinkedIn has a way to click on employees to see you know, how many people are working there. And I would find the people who are involved in hiring. And so their titles might be head of talent, talent manager, recruiter, um, talent with this company, um, and reach out to them individually, one-on-one -on, -one on LinkedIn, and say, hi, I'm interested in this particular job description. And I was wondering if you could connect me with the appropriate person um, to speak to about it. And then I would make sure that your LinkedIn represents the skills that are mm -hmm. on that job description. So job descriptions are usually littered with keywords and it's good to make sure that whatever LinkedIn you have or whatever resume you have um, can connect well to that job description. 
So in other words, what you show should be what you've actually done. Yes. Thank you. And now uh, our next guest is a new guest for our program, but uh, not new to Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. Uh, our guest is Nona Miloslavsky, who's now started a new job at Facebook, and we're going to get into that. Hey, Nona. Hey, good morning, everybody. What do you do? What do you do over at Facebook? I I'm a conference room ambassador, so what I do is. I sort out the Kleenex boxes, the Perel bottles, the black pens, blue pens, um, expo markers that they need. Um, if it's an interview room, then I put like more pens. If it's not, then like a big, there's like a, some conference rooms that are small, some conference rooms that are big that I need to sort out, but, um, yeah, and the other, well, I got the interview for the customer service represented job last Friday. Excellent. And they said that they want to move forward with me, and they're working on it right now, um, getting me started there. So I'll be announcing the big shuttles, <laughs> Facebook shuttles. Really, really good. Yeah. How did you find out about this job, Nona? Well, um, the ARC um, took me there. Well, Pierre, who's the job developer at the ARC, took me there. And then I had the interview on Facebook. And then after that, I started in June 11th of this year. Really, really good. Yes. Since we were talking earlier with Natalie about uh, the interview process, what was your interview like? What did they do? Um, they asked questions like what, um, well, it's called ABM, which is an active ma base management. So um, what ABM does, um, ABM, um, uses the Facebook facilities for us to work at. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty much what it was. Oh. So, are you working actually at Facebook, but you're working yeah. for another company? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, very good. Very good. Called ABM, yeah. Mm -hmm. What does ABM stand for? Active Base Management. Okay, oh, okay. Like a contractor, I'm a contractor. Oh, good for you. Thank yes. you. Yeah. So, how do you commute to work? I walk from my house to Geary and then take the MPK, which is the place, like MPK 14 or MPK 12, and I get there like at 8.25 or so, mm -hmm. but sometimes I take the 6.33 bus also and get there like at 7.39 or later than mm -hmm. after 7.00. Yeah. yeah, the schedule can be really early in yeah, the morning. Better to be early. Five forty or five forty-five. Wake uh -huh. up. Oh my god. Wow. Oh. And it's an hour and thirteen minutes there, and then an hour and a half back, almost two hours because of traffic. Yeah. So, aside from the grueling commute, would you say that you're happy with your new job? What do you especially like about it? Yeah, I'm happy um, meeting new people from around the world, um, free food like barbecue and pizza and Mexican food and ramen like Vietnamese soups, um, free snacks, free breakfast, buffets, um, a lot of new like different style of food that um, Epic does. At Facebook, yeah. Mm -hmm. I should Pretty hope they much. have that for the workers. Yeah. Work hard. Yes. You deserve it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And it's also a sweet shop, too, oh. like an ice cream shop. Whoa. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very nice indeed. So, uh, when you started your job, were you paired up with a supervisor or a mentor? Anybody to help you succeed? Um, yeah. His name is Tyrone Grisby. He's my job coach. Mm -hmm. And also a co-worker 
Christine, Kristen Harvey, who works at Facebook too. She um, helped me with the conference room ambassador role and taught me how to do those skills. And now I'm doing it by myself. Congratulations. Thank you. And now we'll hear from our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy. Thank you, Keith. Hello. It's nice to be back. Happy autumn. I um, wanted to share a few things. Uh, there's a free open house carnival that's happening in the East Bay Saturday, September 29th, and um, it will be taking place at the San Leandro Center for Autism and learning about what, where you'll learn about services, get a tour of the center, and meet the staff while enjoying a day of free food and raffle prizes, including a family four-pack to California's Great America. Saturday, October 20th, will be a SENS 10th conference, and um, the title is In the Spotlight, Autism and the Media at San Francisco State University. More information, go to um, the Ascend uh, website. Tickets are um, at Eventbrite, and uh, yeah, come and explore the adult autistic world with artists and presenters. Uh, one keynote speaker will be Charlene Tilton, who was the star on Dallas. Thank you. We'll now hear from Jennifer Brooks, art book correspondent. Thank you, Keith. Now that the new school year is fully underway for most students, I would like to tell you about a couple of books that focus on education, specifically on high school education. The high school years, as a lot of us know, is one of the most crucial times for healthy emotional development. And yet it seems like the schools that we're forcing our children to attend are designed to do everything they can to thwart that healthy emotional development. So what's the solution? One solution is presented in this book called High Schools on a Human Scale. It talks about the benefits for students who attend small high schools, small meaning less than 500 students total for the entire school. The second book is called Helping a Child with Nonverbal Learning Disorder or Asperger's Disorder. Mm. And it's written by Katherine Stewart, PhD, a leading expert in treating neurocognitive disorders in children. She is the founder and executive director of the Orion Academy in Moraga, California, the first college preparatory high school for students with NLD and Asperger's disorder. And man, would I have given anything to have the opportunity to go to a school like that instead of the large comprehensive high school that I was stuck in, which did nothing at all to meet my needs. So this book covers a lot of familiar territory that are covered in other books regarding children with autism and ways to develop both their academic and their social and emotional development to the fullest extent possible. What really makes this book stand out, aside from who its author is, are the appendices. Throughout the book there are quite a few bulleted lists for those of us who find that sort of thing extremely helpful. Also, for our viewers, uh, sort of a teaser here, uh, we are working uh, to put together in the near future uh, sort of a compendium of Jennifer's reviews, which should be available online. So if you like what you've heard from Jennifer and you want to uh, refer back to some of the earlier ones, pretty soon you'll be able to do just that and we'll keep you apprised. Thank you. Well, folks, that's this week's program for Ascend TV Life on the Autism Spectrum. Until next time, I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. I'm Nona Milosowski. I'm Stacey Kennedy. I'm Natalie Dunnage. And I'm Jennifer Brooks. Thank you all. And one last reminder, we look forward to seeing many of you at the uh, Ascend Conference in October, as Stacey had mentioned. Mm -hmm. So until we see you again, thank you and have a good week.
，拜拜，拜。